Eventually we're going to see how Russell's view is supposed to solve these problems, but first it's important to spend a bit of time thinking about what Russell's view actually is, because it's kind of a bit hard to get your head around it the first time you see it. Probably you started off this lecture when I told you what Russell was arguing for, being very confused, thinking like how could you not think descriptions refer to things. When we spend enough time on thinking through Russell's account it will be clear why he thought that and how he could make sense of that, but it does take some work to really understand what, what Russell was trying to tell us. So remember what I said at the beginning, so I said that what Russell is doing is he's arguing that descriptions are a kind of quantifier, and I also gave you some brief reasons to think that, well, quantifiers just seem to work differently from names. Quantifiers aren't names of things, they're just ways of talking about a group of things, or some portion of a group of things, but in a very different way from the way that names refer to people. But how does that actually work? So I'll be, so if, if I'm right, quantifiers work differently from names, but, but, but what actually do quantifiers mean? How could we say in general what the meaning of a quantifier is? Well, Russell thought that, well, you can't say what a quantifier is by just sort of like looking at the thing in the world it refers to, because that's not how quantifiers work. But we clearly can say in a systematic way what quantifiers contribute to sentences containing them. So rather than looking at particular sentences, right, particular examples of sentences, let's just think about a particular kind of structure of sentence involving quantifiers. So think about a structure like some f's are g's. Now this isn't a particular sentence because you know, we haven't said what the F and the G is, rather it's a structure of a sentence. But even without knowing exactly what the F's and G's are, we can say in a very general way what it is that some contributes to the meaning of any sentence of this form. That is, we know that like whatever the F's and G's are, the full sentence is going to say, well, there's at least one F which is also G. So i just give an example. Some dogs are small. Well, that says there, there is at least one dog that is also small. So to say what the meaning of the word some is, rather than like trying to find some object in the world that some picks out, Russell's thought is, well, we see what it means by just thinking in general about what it contributes to sentences like these. We see that it's, what it contributes is this idea of at least one. Let's take another example. So like most F's or G's. Again, this isn't a particular sentence, it's a sentence structure. Here the quantifier is most f's. And if you want to know what, say, most f's mean, or like most dogs, if you want to, meet, if you want to know what that expression means, you don't go and find some object in the world or some group of object that it refers to. Rather, you say what it means in a very different way. You can say, well, what Whatever most means, the way it works is that sentences of this form say something like maybe over half of the F's or G's. So for instance, in a claim like most Texas Tech students are from Texas, that says something like over half of the students that go to Texas Tech are from Texas. So there again, to say what the word most means, we don't find some object in the world it refers to, but we can say what it means in a slightly different way. We can look at the sentence structure and we can say, well, and for any way of filling in F and G, the sentence most F's or G's, that's going to mean that at least half of the F's are G. So that's a way to think about the quantifiers and what they mean, and that's how Russell thought about the quantifiers. He thought they don't refer to things, they don't have, they don't have meaning in that sense. The way you think about what they mean is, well, look at sentences as a whole that contain them, and think about what does it look like they contribute to those sentences. And we saw in the case of some, they contribute something, an idea like at least one. In the case of most, they contribute the idea of something like at least half. And obviously, the same will work for other examples. So if you think about the structure 2Fs or G, to say what the meaning of 2Fs is, or like two dogs, two students, you don't find some group of objects in the world that that refers to. Rather, you say, well, what does it contribute to sentences as a whole? 
and it seems to contribute this idea of at least two. So we have this way of saying what the quantifiers mean by telling people what, what do sentences containing them, what, what in general do they mean. And this is what Russell is going to do for descriptions as well. So let's get a structure corresponding to description on the board. Bf is g. So just like we said we could give the meaning of words like some or two or most by saying in general what do they contribute to sentences that contain them, we also thinks, well, we can say what the meaning of a description is, or a definite description in particular, by saying, well, what in general do sentences like these mean? And this is Russell's answer. He says, well, a sentence of, like, of that form, a sentence of the form the F is G, what that means is there's exactly one F and that thing is also G. So for instance, take the sentence, the, pres the US president is a man. What Russell says is, well, sentence is like, well, that's of the form, the F is G. So what that sentence says is, there's exactly one president of the United States, and that thing is also a man. So that's what he thinks that those kinds of sentences mean. But let's just think through one more example. The professor of this class is David Boylan. On Russell's view, what that sentence says, well, how do we figure it out? Well, we know that in general, sentences of the form F is G, we know that those mean there's exactly one F and that thing is G. So the F is professor of this class and G is David Boylan. What that says is, there's exactly one professor of this class, and that thing is David Boylan. So like with other quantifiers, Russell thinks we say what the meaning of descriptions are by looking, kind of in general, at what do sentences containing them, what do sentences of a particular structure mean, and what does the description seem to contribute. And this is what Russell thinks it contributes. It always gives you a sentence which means something of the form, there's exactly one F, and that thing is also G. That's what sentences of the form, the F is G, mean. So when you think about Russell's view of what descriptions contribute to sentences containing them, you can see that there's actually an explanation for why you might have thought that descriptions were names. So let's take a particular example. So the person who lives next door is noisy. So in some sense that I'm, I'm kind of loosely talking about the person next door. But let's think about what that means on Russell's view. What it means is there is exactly one person, one thing. Which lives next door. which is the person who lives next door. And that thing is noisy. Now if you think about a sentence like this, there is exactly one thing or there's exactly one person who lives next door and that person or thing is noisy. With a sentence like that, I'm clearly talking about somebody, but there I'm never using a name for somebody. I'm not, I'm not ever referring to them. Because just look at the sentence. There's exactly one thing which lives next door, and that thing is noisy. Is there anything in that sentence which sort of directly refers to the person? Well, no. Rather, I'm sort of picking them out indirectly by using this quantifier. But I'm not using a name. I'm not, there's nothing in the sentence whose meaning is just the person next door. But you can see that while I haven't actually used a name here, I've said something that 
mean something very similar if I had actually just used my neighbor's name instead. And this is why Russell might say the view that descriptions of names are so, is so tempting. Because what you actually say using a description, it's very similar to what you would say using a name, but it's not quite the same thing. And in particular, what you say using a description doesn't ever use an expression which directly refers to the person that you're talking about. Now, in, case, in very simple cases, like just the, the person who lives next door is noisy, or the president of the US lives in the White House, in those examples, there isn't going to be much of a difference between what they say and what the corresponding sentence would say if you just replace the description with a name. But when it comes to the puzzles, we'll see that actually, in more complicated sentences, it makes a big difference whether you use a description or a name.